everyone, Tyler Holland again here with Outboard Specialty Tools and today we're out on the lovely Wando River near Charleston and we are going to uh, deal with a fuel system on this F-250 that is completely full of water. So the boat's fuel tank has taken on a bunch of water and the uh, motor did what the motor does which is suck fuel out of the tank and in this case it was pretty much entirely water I think. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and bypassed the actual boat fuel system. So I've disconnected the uh, on the downhill side of our filter, so this is the incoming line, and capped this off so that this can't leak when the temp changes and starts starts uh, making the fuel want to expand. So at this point the boat is completely cut off, is completely out of the loop. Uh, the other thing that I've done here is I've gone ahead and drained the vapor separator tank, what little was in there that was basically pure water, and that's been taken care of. I've got my fancy uh, MEDS uh, marine engine diagnostic software made by CDI Electronics hooked up. I'm going to use it to remotely actuate the uh, fuel pump and see what we got going on um, once we can get some fuel into the VST. And I have our fuel systems testing equipment hooked up here as well. Um, so what I've got here is OST, FST, 001, and this is our quick connect testing equipment so that you can connect up to fuel systems that have no Schrader fittings whatsoever. So this is just quick connects. So I've gone ahead and disconnected the uh, high pressure fuel line here. This is the motor uh, supply line going to the injector rail on the starboard bank. So I have put our quick connect on their supply here and our other quick connect is going into the quick connect barb on the top of the starboard fuel rail here. And so what this attachment does is it allows us to either hook up a fuel pressure gauge um, onto this fitting right here, which is, that's a Schrader fitting, which is capped off to keep, protect the threads. And it also allows us to inspect fuel samples, as we'll see in a minute. And so this clear line here goes to my shutoff valve here and this will connect up to our remote, uh, our, our hose extension so we can run fuel pressure gauge all the way up to the uh, helm. So when you're testing under, uh, when you're testing under a load, when you're out in the river running around trying to pull fuel pressures, you don't got to look back. It's right there next to you at the helm and you can put the cowling on and not worry about swamping the motor or any of that stuff. And it's going to push a bunch of, probably a bunch of watery crap in here. Um, well, before I do that, let me back up one second. The other thing I've done is this is the supply line going to the VST, and I have um, clean, fresh gas in here, and basically in my shop tank. And so, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and prime up, uh, get our VST full. Okay, so at this point, we have primed the VST up with fresh fuel. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what we got coming out of the uh, starboard fuel rail. So, let's see here. Okay. You can see we just got pressurized fuel sample, bunch of crud coming through there. Um, at this point, yeah, what you can see there in our little viewing area is water and maybe something that's like fuel, maybe not. But um, at this point, it's all pressurized in here. If I want to get it into my fancy jar, just open up our shutoff here, do like this, and voila, easy peasy. If I can do it, anyone can. So now I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get another sample coming through here. So at this point, we're also, I got fresh fuel again in the VST, and I'm just using my computer to uh, help me push this fuel out and try to flush fresh fuel in so I can get this motor to light up again. Because at this point, it ain't running. When I pulled the spark plugs out, they were all wet and uh, definitely had water getting pushed in by, by the injectors. And so, um, one more time, go ahead and get the pump moving. And you can see that doesn't resemble good clean gas at all. 
I might start getting some before terribly long. It's, I mean, it's looking better now. But that's the whole point of flushing this stuff out. We don't want to try to put any more of that stuff through the fuel injectors than we have to. To flush this baby out. At some point, we're going to start getting clean enough fuel where I'll have some confidence so we can try to spin this sucker over. So I've just gone and cycled it three more times. You can see the line starting to clear out. The really milky, cloudy stuff starting to push through. Mostly getting decent fuel now. Um, nice and clean and ready to try to spin the motor over. Now the other beauty of this system that I'm using um, is that, again, we're over the water. We don't want to spill fuel into the river. Um, but our jar is nearly full, so what I'm going to do is shut off our valve here and get our jar emptied out, um, put a cloth in here. So we can empty our jar out. Okay, now at this point I've gone through, I've probably cycled through another quarter or so of fuel. And all I'm doing is just seeing what's coming out of here again. Same drill as before. And I'm just looking to make sure we're getting some clean fuel out of here. And it looks like it's a lot better than it was before. So let's take another sample. You can see we got much more clear, much, much better quality fuel. That's pretty much clean fuel coming through there now. Air bubbles are just coming through because there's air trapped up in here in my, in my testing apparatus. Um, but the uh, fuel system, because we're using quick connects, all that good stuff, uh, there's super fast disconnect and super clean, super dry. Okay, one last sample and then I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and shut it off here so I can actually look what's coming out. Mm, it's still a little cloudy. I'd rather see it not cloudy at all. We just got a big old blob of water in there. One nice thing about this tubing is you got good clean fuel in there, you can see right through it, it's pretty much clear as a window. Okay, I'm going to pull one more sample here off the starboard rail, and I'm going to jump over and do the same thing on the port side. Yeah, we got much better fuel coming through there now. So I'm going to go ahead and cap this off. So shut this off here, then I'm going to disconnect here, um, put the high pressure feed back onto the starboard injector rail here. Now we're connecting back up. Don't want to ruin that little sensor lead plate. So we've gone ahead and disconnected the port high pressure line. Now we're going with our quick connect onto the fuel rail. Want to hear that click. Got that click and we're in. Same thing here. Okay. One hand. Beautiful. Connect this guy back up so we don't aggravate the computer. Alright, now we're ready to do the same thing we're doing on the starboard side, which is try to flush out whatever crud is in the port side line. Thankfully it's a very short line because you can see the VST is right there. So flush this out and uh, hopefully soon we're going to try to spin this motor over and see if we'll get it to light up, try to get some fuel pressure. See, this one's got some more crud feeding through there. Let's see what we got here. Pretty clean, actually. Nowhere near as bad as the starboard side. I'm going to keep pushing fuel through here. And a little bit of the same. There's some water and stuff coming out of there now. Let's see, the jar looks pretty cloudy.
looking a lot better. A little happy with that. So now I'm gonna shut it off. Let's see if we can get let's see if we can get it to push something clean through there. Okay, now got what looks like pretty darn cleanish fuel sample. What I'm seeing in the rail makes me happy enough to go ahead and stop flushing. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and connect up a uh, fuel pressure gauge. Connect up my gauge to here. All right, we've gone ahead and just connected up our fuel gauge, fuel fuel pressure gauge to the Schrader fitting on the test attachment. See what we can get here. Probably help if I put more fuel on the VST. Okay, got pressure. And the fuel pressure regulator is doing its job. The pressure come down to where it should be. And now we have the motor out of the water. Um, I'm gonna need to lower the boat into the water to run it. First, I'm gonna see if I can get it to get it to light up. Oh, that's better than we got yesterday. Good enough. Time to drop this thing in the water and see if we can get it to run for a bit. Okay, now we're lowering down in the water. It's not going to make you wait the entire 35 minutes. It's going to take to get us down where we can get the gear case in the water. So freaking close. Look how close we are. 15 minutes later, we're getting there. Slowly but surely. has been slowly losing pressure uh, since I went key off about five minutes ago to lower us in the water. Um, always the injectors, at least one or one of the injectors or more is hanging open. Um, but once we get this thing, first things first, get the motor running, get clean fuel pushing through the fuel system, get the water out of the fuel system on the motor. And the next step is get this thing on the hill do a real tear down, get the fuel system completely cleaned out, tear out the VST pump, get our injectors sent off for cleaning, and then see how they test. But we've lost 18, 20 PSI just sitting here when the injectors should be closed. Alright, we're about ready to go ahead and crank this beauty up. It is to be expected. So this motor is going to run like crap for a little while. It's still probably got water in the injectors. And there's probably still water in the bottom of the rails. Definitely got a miss on at least one cylinder. y'all in YouTube lane can hear it, but definitely got at least one cylinder ain't hidden. Hold the fuel pressure steady. That's about where Yamaha likes to see it. This is about the same, about 40 PSI. Sometimes we go down a little bit lower, maybe 38-ish. Again, we're just running off shop fuel here. Both in my hand. You can see right there. There's just a little goo in there. So at this point, all I'm doing is uh, just keeping pumping fresh fuel into the VST and letting the VST do its job, which is uh, push fuel throughout the rest of the in injection system, get it to all the injectors on both rails, 
hope we uh, replace some of the water that's in the injectors. Probably won't get it all out, but really the objective is to uh, get as much water out as we can and get this boat to the hill. Alright, at this point I can definitely hear... Yeah, sounds like all six are back online now. You might still be missing on one. Tough to tell, sitting here in the water. I'm not going to really know what's up officially until we get this thing uh, where we can take a better look at it. We ain't tearing anything more down over the water, unless I got to. Now I just went into idle and forward. Seeing how it's idling. Idling pretty good. You can see our fancy pressure test in the captain. Holding pressure. Not leaking. Like it was designed to do. As in, it was designed not to leak. Everything's nice and clean. Got good clean fuel in the little viewing tube there. Motor holding pressure. We are on a boat lift, so I'm gonna leave it here until I've had a chance to run it for a little while longer and then go take it for a spin. I'm gonna turn up the RPM just a little bit. All right, well, that about wraps up our demo and uh, tutorial on how to flush out your fuel system using, um, I mean, you can get by without having the med software, but it's a real nice thing to have. If you don't have med software, what you're gonna have to do is cycle the uh, key switch on and off about a few dozen times so that you can get the fuel pumps to push clean fuel and try to displace as much as the uh, contaminated stuff as possible. Flush it out through our flush tube there and uh, push good stuff in. Right now I'm confident we have pretty good gas in the fuel system on the motor, but like I said, no substitute for a uh, complete fuel system teardown, which is first thing on the list as soon as we get this thing trailered. And uh, well, that's it for today, everybody. Again, Tyler Holland for Outboard Specialty Tools. Feel free to check us out um, and uh, contact us anytime with any questions. Thanks.